Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm a bit full on here. I'm a bit like high up the screen. I'm going to take us back a wee bit just so my face isn't, you know, right in there. Um, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a live special of Celtic Transfer Talk and not just any live special. Welcome to the Deadline Day live special of Celtic Transfer Talk. You can see already I'm joined by Ryan McGinley. We'll come to Ryan in a minute. There's a few things to address. Number one, yes, it's only four o'clock. There's still a few good hours to go. We could have saved this till later on, but sadly... I am going to be at a, a gig tonight. I'm going to be at a concert, Ryan. I'm going to be boogieing my heart out. Um, I'm not even that keen to go, but here we are. Uh, the second thing to address, as you've noticed, there's, there's been no sell like the Thunder episode this week. There's been no podcast. We'll try and sort that out and get something, maybe a phone in or such this week. It's just been incredibly busy for myself with TSF, with other content and, and doing different things. Just not managed to get round of it. So we are yeah. here live giving you a sort of somewhat of a podcast because we're going to be here for quite a while as we hope for something to happen. Uh, I was hoping this would be an eventful live stream. I was hoping this would be a live stream where we're talking about signings piling through the door, but as it currently stands at three minutes past four on the 31st of August, we've yet to see anybody be announced by Celtic on deadline day. On that note, I may as well introduce my guest. I may as well introduce the man himself, Mystic McGinley. McGinley in the know, whatever you want to call him. It's Ryan McGinley anyway. Ryan, how are you doing? I, I, I didn't want to change my name today. Um, I'm feeling a wee bit downbeat today. Um, hopefully mm -hmm. that can change in the next couple of hours. But um, I thought we were going to be a wee bit busier than this as we just seen that um, Celtic have put out the sort of tickets are available for the Europa League. It's trust trust Celtic to put out something like that first before any signs. They could have they could have waited a couple of days. Nope, they have to um, they have to go for something that we need to pay for. That it's it's about time they pull out the big bucks and start signing people rather than the fans forking out more money. We've done our side of the bargain, they should do theirs. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping we can get the two guys in that have been talked about for basically a week now. Um, Jota and Giacomakis, the, the, the ones that we know that are basically done, we're just waiting to hear them get announced. Knowing Celtic, they'll get announced about two hours before the deadline to make it look as if we've been busy when these, these deals are done. And, you know, it's, it's the same old, same old every year. We've got positions that we still need replacements in, and I don't think they're coming in, so I'm a wee bit concerned. Well, I've got, as you can see, the, the yellow theme around this. I've got the, the, the proper deadline day vibes. I've got the chat there. We've got over 200 people watching at the moment. Hopefully that grows, and you can get involved. I will throw comments up on screen as we go out the, through the show. Um, but hopefully at some point, Ryan, I've got it all prepared. Hopefully at some point I can throw up a wee bit of, no, you know, breaking That's news. Class. I'd like to throw up a wee bit of breaking news at some point, but we, we don't know what's going to happen. We'll probably be here for a wee while, but knowing Celtic, we'll have to avoid uh, any breaking news because we just won't get any. Um, so we may as well, I've got a running order. We've got things to talk about that have already happened, the news that we're hearing about that we haven't covered on the channel, on the podcast or whatever. So we may as well go through that just now and we can get people say in the comments as well. So where else to start? But we may as well start with the news of Lee Griffiths leaving the club this morning. It was a delight for me to wake up and see the video of yep. him that was leaked in the Dundee kit in the middle of Dens Park. We heard murmurs that it could happen, Ryan, but it is official now. Dundee have signed Lee Griffiths on a loan until the end of the season. He's not featured the competitive match yet for Celtic, despite that new one-year deal he was handed when Ange Postacoglu first came to the club. Um, and he will now go to Dundee for a year. Um, and with his contract expiring at the end of that year, it looks likely that Lee Griffiths will never play for Celtic again. He joined in 2014, scored 123 goals and 261 appearances for the club. He's part of the 100 club for Celtic, but his time at Celtic it looks to be over. Ryan, we were hoping that would happen in this window. Yeah, I was hoping it was. I was hoping he didn't even get a new deal to begin with. So. I mean, it's it's late, but it's it's welcome news at the same time. Um, the guy over the past couple of years has been consistently shooting himself in the foot with his off the field antics and his lack of preparation on the pitch. So it's good that um, Don McKay and Ange Postecoglou have heard the fans. They heard them against West Ham. I was there at that game. It was a complete circus. The amount of half of the people, well, it was more than sixty four. I would say. 60% were booing him and 40% were cheering him or were trying to cheer even louder so that nobody could hear the boos. That sort of circus isn't needed, especially in a rebuild when we're trying to sort of wrestle the title back. We don't need these sort of sideshows. 
Um, I'm glad to see him go, but at the same time, it is a, it is a wasted potential from Lee Griffiths. Lee Griffiths scored 120 goals for this club. Could have been on double that if he'd played his cards right, played mm-hmm. his cards right, and 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 didn't go in any controversy. I didn't get himself involved in any controversy. A lot of it, he did have that that sort of mental health thing a couple of years ago as well. That that can't be um, sort of forgotten, but. I remember at the time Brendan Rogers said Lee Griffiths needs to pay us back because we we've done we've done our side of the bargain and I don't think that was fully realised. Um, so he's away to Dundee. I'm, I'm sure he will score goals for Dundee if he's fully fit. But um, I'm glad to get him glad to get him away from the club and hopefully um, he doesn't come back because you know we can't make the same mistake next season if we we're going off for him a deal. Um, I don't think that would happen now, but at the same time. You know, weirder things have happened. So I just hope we don't find ourselves in that position next season as well. It's inevitable that he's going to end up scoring for Dundee against Celtic. It just feels like that sort of thing is going to happen. He won't. He can't. He can't play against Celtic. Loan players can't play against Celtic. Oh, that's right. Yeah, of course. Can't play against parent club. Yeah, of course, of course. Unless there's something in the um the agreement that, you know, they've, they've struck that he's allowed to play against Celtic, which I highly doubt. I just remembered about that. Well done, Ryan. Good reminder. Um, Universally, I think this one's a bit more, there's a, a, a little less discussion uh, surrounding Griffiths leaving the club and how you replace Griffiths and the impact of him leaving. Because as I said, universally, I feel like that you know, we need to understand that the majority of fans wanted Griffiths out of the club. Yes, there was a, a, an aspect of the support who would want him have, to have stayed and they feel like he could have recovered that fine form of six years ago. But, you know, he's, he, 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 he ultimately owns us a lot more um, and what we owe him for the last few years of service. We've had nothing. Yeah. People keep saying that fit Lee Griffiths is one of the best strikers in the country, but we've not seen a fit, fit Lee Griffiths in a long, long time. And we thought we got that back in January of 2020, right before the pandemic struck. You thought that would have been a good opportunity for him to go away, work on his fitness a bit more and come back for what was the 10 in a row season and, and give us a, a season to remember for Lee Griffiths. But he came back at what stone overweight, he threw away all of his chances um, and basically he's, he's got himself in this situation where he's had to go to a side like Dundee rather than stay at a title challenge in Celtic side, Ryan. Yeah, um, he really let himself down uh, last season. I was I was calling for him to go last season, to be honest, as well. Coming back in a 10 row season, I know we were in lockdown and that, but to come back a stone overweight, as Neil Lennon said, um, that just wouldn't have happened under Brendan Rodgers. I feel like under mm-hmm. if it was Brendan Rodgers, he would have just thrown him out completely. I would have been gone. He would have been gone. Mm-hmm. But I remember, I remember Neil Lennon about a week later saying he was doing so well in training after he after he came back from a from from the pre season sort of tour of France or whatever. Um, so there was a lot, there was a lot of uh, it was going on, and that was one of the first signs that things weren't all great at Celtic at that point. Um, I mean, Matthew's down, asked a, Matthew's he, asked a, an interesting question. No, sorry, to cut you off. He's asked an interesting question. Matthew Duff. He said, "Would you forgive Griffiths if he goes to Ibrooks and scores against Rangers and took points off them?" I think, but the venue doesn't really matter. Would you forgive him for taking points off Rangers this season? Not because he's a striker and that's his job to score goals. Um, no, he's he's let himself far, he's let himself down far too many times for me. Um, although he has scored a lot of goals. I think you, you can't you can't talk about Griffiths' goals without talking about his lack of professionalism as well in certain years, and it's been continual. And it would have just happened this season again. Um, I think the the real nail in the coffin was when he walked up the tunnel when Ayeti came on. Ayeti's a guy that's came in and worked hard in pre season, mm-hmm. and I don't know if Gra- Griffiths has been the same. So I, I mean, you, we don't know the full story. I don't want to sort of speculate, but if, his, his attitude. Yeah, you can only assume, like, I, was, I was going to bring that point up, when you're storming up the tunnel because you haven't been subbed on, that, that right there is a sign of the professionalism, that's the sign of the player you've yep. got. Now, I understand Lee Griffiths is the kind of guy who wants to be playing football, and he's getting a move where he's getting to go and play football, but when your manager, when your new manager who's given you a one-year contract against the wish of the majority of fans, uh, doesn't bring you on, and that's the kind of attitude that you give back to that said manager for me that says everything for me that shows that there was no place for him at Celtic Football Club right yeah definitely I thought when that happened I was like this is the last time I'm going to hear Lee Griffiths and it does look like that's the case now in fact mm-hmm. it definitely is because I don't see him coming back next season I don't see he's been stupid enough to give him another deal we were stupid to give him a deal in the first place even though there was a lot of clamour online to give him a deal um, I wasn't part of that because 
at the end of the day, he just he's, he's one of these characters that just continually lets you down. I, I'm a fit and fire in Lee Griffiths will score you 40 goals a season. Well, he's not been fit and firing since 2015, so what, what do we expect? Um, and good luck to him at Dundee, you know. He scored a lot of goals for us, but I'm, I'm just happy he's out of the club. Uh, and, and finally, just to touch on that, talking about Dundee, do you think he'll give them something this season? You know, he's, it's quite the characters they're building up at that club. Killian Sheridan, Jason Cummins, Charlie Adam, they, they seem to be bringing in a lot of these guys who have a bit of personality around them, you could say, um, a bit of a character. Um, so how do you expect him to do this season at Dundee? Do you think that there's any hope of him having a, a season where he kind of maybe goes, oh, well, there's a question there. I think his time at Celtic's done. He's not going to come back to Celtic. Yeah. He won't score 25 goals for Dundee this season, and I still don't see him coming back to play for Celtic. But in, in, in terms of Dundee, how do you feel he'll do? A lot of people are asking, Dundee United or Dundee, it's, it's Dundee. If it was Dundee United, we would have said United a lot of times by now. But um, how do you think he'll, he'll do for Dundee? I think he'll score goals, yeah. Um, depends how much game time we'll get. If he's, is he going to be the first choice there? Because um, mm-hmm. Jason Cummins is there, Kelly and Sheridan. I don't know if he'll be on the bench to begin with. It all depends on Lee Griffiths at the end of the day. I mean, there is some truth to the sort of a fit and fire in Lee Griffiths. Well, scored you goals. I thought the, the 40 goals a season was a bit ridiculous. 20 goals was ridiculous as well. I remember John Hartson coming out and saying that. That mm-hmm. was never going to happen. Um, but he will score goals for Dundee if he's, if he's fully fit. Um, He's just not good enough for Celtic anymore. And we, we can't take a risk on him again. We've taken too many risks in Lee Griffiths. And I'd much rather bring in a guy that scored 26 goals in the Eredivisie last yep. season. There's a big question, though, and I don't want to keep talking about Griffiths because we've got so much to run through, especially the outgoings from now. As we hopefully, I'm sitting here refreshing my feeds and, and getting updates through messages and just hoping that something same, does break for us. Um, but the, the big question is about wages, you know, we're, we're still going to be probably paying a, a lump with this guy's contract. Um, we don't know exactly what the specifics are, but, you know, it just brings into perspective how daft this one-year extension actually was. Like, we gave him a one-year extension to then loan him out to another football club. Now, granted, I don't think any of us seen the, the coming news that came the next few days afterwards, and we all yeah. know what that was. I don't think any of us seen that coming, but it just do, does go into perspective to show how daft it was to give this guy another year at the club. It was, and you know, it was daft on his part as well because that news came out a couple of days after he'd signed the extension and it shows that that was the sort of deciding factor, I think, in letting him go out on loan or basically just banishing him away from Celtic. Um, uh, It was an absolute nightmare scenario. It it just shows you out the two of them. Sorry. I've just, I'm going through Twitter, right? And you know, football for all. Um, They've put up a post, right? And I know it's got nothing to do with Celtic, but I can't help it. (laughs) Have a little bit of a laugh here. Um, Football for All are reporting that Arab media are reporting that Lacazette and Odegaard had sexual intercourse in the Arsenal facilities. And then somebody's just retweeted it saying, all or nothing should be a good watch at the end of the season. <laughs> I mean, I don't, much, I don't think it'll be much I don't think it'll be much truth uh, to so- that. Uh, wait, if, you, if you look further down on that thread, there is a, actually an edit of the All or Nothing <laughs> poster. <laughs> I can't, I can't even, I can't even, I can't even um, oh. repeat what it says. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, right, we'll just, we'll, we'll kid on, we never seen that, and that wasn't part of our, 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 um, I our show today. A, I thought that was a fake, I thought that was a fake page, is it? Is I that don't a fake page? I don't no, I think it's not. It's the official football for all page. It's that page. But anyway, let's get back to talking about Celtic. Let's get let's get back to talking about Celtic. Let's get back on track. Just a little bit of a laugh there that we had to go about. Uh, talking about all outgoings, let's move on to the second player who could be leaving the club this afternoon. We'll go and talk about the man himself, Ryan Christie, who is looking likely to join Bournemouth in the English Championship. Well, we've yet to hear more updates on it, but the news broke last night that the Burnley and Bournemouth if we're in for Ryan Christie um, and he's of course a free agent on January 1st uh, the, the rumours are and the talk is that he's recently rejected the contract extension at Celtic which means it looks likely he will leave the club uh, Scott Parker keen to bring him in he's out with the Scotland squad of course right now for the qualifying matches against Denmark Moldova etc etc um, but Bournemouth the English Championship the move looks like that could be it for Christie there's been such a split opinion Ryan on the departure of Christie people saying it will be a blow for the club people happy to see him go um, ultimately 
ultimately, I have to take it way back, Ryan. I need to take it way back to the start. Why on earth we decided to give a player a contract that ended in January, the midway through? You know, this isn't an MLS player. This is a Scottish Premiership player. Contracts shouldn't be ending in the middle of a league campaign, no matter how important that campaign may be. Um, so taking yeah. all of that aside for a minute, your personal opinions on the player and whether or not you're happy to see him go, um, it is a bit bizarre that we've ultimately ended ourselves in this situation where we have to talk about a player leaving for free in January or whatnot. Yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare scenario. I remember the, the rumour going about for months and months that his deal was done in January. It looks as if that is the case. Um, fuck, it's... With Christy, I was very much on the fence even at the start of this season. I thought if he could get reinvigorated into the squad and sign an extension, then I'd be quite happy to have him in the team. At this point now, Celtic have just got to cover themselves because mm -hmm. if they're going to get maybe one, two million for him, for a guy that isn't signing a new contract and is going for free, it's, it's a no-brainer. You've got to let him go. Um, yeah. I wouldn't want him to stay. I wouldn't want him to stay because he is, he is playing really well in every game apart from the Rangers game that was just passed there, which has kind of left a sour taste in my mouth. Um, if he was to continue to do well and well and well and he's still not signing a new contract, all of a sudden in January, you're just losing your best player or one of your best players. Mm -hmm. So it's better off to let him go just now, soften the blow and um, hopefully sign a replacement in the next couple of hours. I mean... It's annoying. Yeah, that's the, that's the, the, the big question mark now is like you replace and make sure we've got enough players in there. We'll, we'll come on to talking yeah. about squad go, squad depth and all that towards the end of the show. Right. But we do need another player, I think, Ryan. I mean, Christy, for as controversial that's as he may be and such, it's just a bit odd that, like, feeling like we're losing a quality player not to replace him with another quality player. I The thing is, we're, we're replacing him with, and I know we'll get on to talking about him, a left winger. Christy's only started playing at left wing this season. Yeah, he's not Christy a left winger. Originally, a number, he was a number 10 yep. or played just behind. He was a box to box. Um, so I'm quite surprised that there's been no links with another midfielder. Even in Scotland, just sort of um, McCann or Lewis Ferguson, even even just to get somebody through the door. Um, I, de I definitely do think we look really light midfield wise, um, which is really disappointing. And I think that showed again at the weekend the fact that we could only bring on Rogic. We didn't have any. I mean, we have James McCarthy, but he's injured. There'll always be a question mark about his injuries. Mm -hmm. So it is a wee bit of a concern for me, but I'm sure we'll talk about that more when we come to it. Yeah, so, so this is where, you know, Christy, is, as we've spoke about, there's a, a, a split opinion. And get your opinions in the chat, ladies and gents. We'll, we'll try and have a look at what some people are saying. Um, for me, Christy wants to leave the club. That's evident. If he didn't want to leave the club, he would have signed a contract long before now. We wouldn't have to have this discussion right yeah. now. He would have signed a contract in January. He would have signed a contract at the start of the, the 2021 campaign. He clearly doesn't want to be here. So if he goes, he goes. I can't dispute that. If it was coming from a point of view looking at a footballer, I'd want to keep him because he is a quality footballer. But at the end of the day, how, how far does that go with someone who evidently doesn't want to be at the club? There's no point in keeping him around till January, as you've said, Ryan. There's, you may as well get short of him now um, for as yep. good as he may be for as annoying as he may be whatever your opinions is of him the player he doesn't want to be here it's better lose them now than it is in January um, and Bournemouth you know what to me it's a step down um, in my it mind is. in my mind I can't I can't fathom why you would want to switch playing European football and uh, playing at Celtic Park to go and play for Bournemouth in the championship because Let's be honest, be, if he went to Burnley, it would be just as bad because, you know, it's not a great team, but at least that's Premier League football. It's a bit understandable. I think it just shows, you know, he, he knows he wants the big he, rising money. I don't think Bournemouth are anywhere near the force they used to be. I, I do like Scott Parker. It's a bit bizarre all round, but it just does outline, it's, it strengthens the point of how much he wants away from Celtic, I think, if he's willing to go to Bournemouth. It does, yeah, definitely. Um, the Bournemouth one's a really weird one, especially when they don't even have Eddie Howe as a manager anymore. Um, I thought he was a big pulling factor for anybody going to Bournemouth. I know Scott Parker's got experience, but um, it's it's a weird one. I don't I don't even know where he'll play. Will he play on the left wing? I, I don't see him getting in the team ahead of uh, Brooks. Brooks is a far better player than Ryan Christie, in my opinion. Um, that 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 could be a wee bit contentious, but I think Brooks is a better player. Um, it's a bit of a weird one. I don't know if he wants to go clo get closer to. Stuart Armstrong, I know he stays down in the Southampton sort of area, um, mm -hmm. close to his pals. Down the south and, coast. And, and you've get they're not too far away from uh, Ayer as well at Brentford, so I don't know if they want to be meeting up in that. I don't know if it's a good move. It's it's probably just to get in the sort of shop window again. If 
if he does well at Bournemouth and doesn't get promoted, then somebody else will pick him up in the Premier League. But again, a couple of seasons ago, would Bournemouth have been a team that Christie would have wanted to go to? I'm not too sure. I mean, maybe in maybe in the Premier in the Premier League, but it, it's just it's not a great move from much like I mean we'll talk about Edward as well, and I, I realise that we're going to get onto him soon. It's moves that I don't think would have been as appealing two seasons ago, mm-hmm. um, and now and now it's kind of like they're, they're they're just taking whatever they can get just to get down south. Down south is where they ought to aim to be, I suppose. But here's the point we'll come on to now. So Andy's of the opinion, and of course, everybody will have their own opinions, but Andy has the opinion that Christie can be easily replaced. He's not a great miss. Um, I think that that's one that's once again very 50-50. Cheers, Andy. Um, very 50-50. People will say, yeah, we can get better. People will say, well, listen, when Christie plays his best, and we've seen him at his best umpteen times, but it's a question of how often has he been his best recently. Yeah, I think we can replace Christy. We definitely can. There are players mm-hmm. out there that we can bring in. We can bring in creative midfielders. We can bring in players, that, if you want to call them a left winger, that can play in the left wing, whatnot, right? But at the end of the day, when are we going to replace Christy? That's my worry. You know, it's not going to be today by the looks of things. So that's yeah. the big question. It's all very well and good saying, uh, and there's Lawrence, by the way, two pound duration. Thanks very much, Lawrence, saying Brooks is a right winger, Ryan. Just to, is he? I think so, I yeah. Thought, I, I, thought he played, I thought he played centrally. No, I, I think he has a right winger, to be fair. I think he has a right winger. Yeah. Um, I didn't correct you at the time because I can, I'm just imagining he probably can play as a number 10, but I'm sure he has a right winger. Um, but the, yeah, the question is, when do we replace Christy? And that's my worry. And as I've already said, we'll come on to the squad depth later in the, the, the stream. Um, but I think right now, I just want to take away the quality conversation and talk about replacing them because Celtic need to do it. You can't ignore it. It's, it's, it. I feel like that word has got to come back and it's only a matter of time before we're two, three months into the season and what we're going to be shouting about, bold negligence, letting players leave and not signing replacements. That's just my worry, Ryan. Yeah, it's worrying. I just hope that there was more in what uh, Ange was saying a couple of weeks ago, or last week rather, about the J-League. If he's seen maybe a number 10 that's playing over there, um, that he can replace in January. Um, I mean, the, the squad looks okay from like a first 11 perspective once we get the two new players in, but apart from that, see if there's a couple of injuries, I think we're in trouble in terms of a, an attacking midfielder sort of option. Yep. Um, can, can Rogic be trusted over the course of a season, especially when he's back in, back in the frame for international call-ups as well, which... Isn't good news for us. I would much rather Rogic sort of cuts his ties with the Australian national team. I know that probably won't happen, but for the the for his Celtic career, it would probably be the best thing for him to focus on his club football first. Um, Turnbull, you seen you seen the sort of doubts in, in the last game against Rangers. I, he he started the season quite well. Um, didn't have a great sort of first two three games, but the but apart from that, he's been pretty good. And then obviously that performance against Rangers wasn't too great so I, I would prefer to have another midfielder in there to, to replace Christy but we'll, we'll see what happens, I, I don't see us bringing one in before the end of this window so we'll need to probably wait till January see what sort of deals we can do um, maybe in the Asian market or, or down south or something or closer to home but it's, it's, it's a bit worrying um, we, we, have had, we have done a lot of business in this window but I don't know if we've done enough business yeah we'll come on to that we'll come on to that don't worry uh matthew saying he wants a, a south american number 10 please that would be delicious talking about south american number 10s i'm going to do a little segue just to break it up a little bit only a couple of minutes don't worry we're going to be talking about celtic for as long as we're here for the over 860 viewers but very quickly um talking about deadline day transfers outside of celtic ryan anything so far that's that's caught your eye anybody i mean who is it newcastle have just signed santiago munez i, I knew you were going to mention him i yeah, knew you were yeah. going to mention him that Who's is of a just total the- market employee <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a couple of other moves around around England. I think Dan James has now completed his move to Leeds United from Manchester United. Um, I think there's now talk of Nuno, Nuno Mench, one of the youngest prospects in the fullback game, is getting a move to Paris Saint-Germain, it looks like. They're still what talking about Kelly and Mbappe maybe going to Real Madrid. It, it looked as though he's maybe going to stay, but now the conversation's back up. What are you thinking of deadline day so far before we move back on to Celtic very quickly? Um... I don't think it's as mental as it used to be a couple of years ago because I think there's that amount of money that, that people are willing to wait for deals rather than do it in the last minute. Mm-hmm. They'll, maybe, they'll maybe look in January to do deals, but there's not as much of a, a clamour as there used to be. Remember, 
remember outside outside the grounds there was people with all sorts of objects for those Sky Sports reporters. Though I think those Missed days that. are long gone. They've, I that. think they've been allowed. I I know. Um, in terms of individual deals, it'll be interesting to see if uh, Moise Kian can do well at uh, Juventus again. He's back there from from Everton. He's going back to Juventus. Let's see if he can sort of rekindle that flame he had that sort of half season season that he had at Juventus. He done really well. That got me his move to Everton. Um, in terms of other deals, let me think. Let me think. Let me see, because there's not been up in that many standout deals. I think if if Chelsea can sign Saul, that'll be a great deal. Yep. On a loan with an option to buy. If that if that's the case, then I would put Chelsea as one of the favourites to win the, the Premier League and Champions League probably as well. Um Camavinga to Real Madrid, that's a great move. Um mm-hmm. that probably puts the sort of the brakes on Pogba going to Real Madrid because Camavinga plays the same Wasn't gonna game. happen anyway, wasn't gonna happen anyway, Ryan. Don't you worry, wasn't gonna happen. But say uh, look, listen, we'll go back. Oh, there's my camera away. Just as I was about to segue back into talking about Celtic. Let's get back into that and let's talk about the last outgoing of the transfer window for Celtic. Well, what seems to be the last outgoing for Celtic in the transfer window, unless something decides to surprise us last minute. Let's talk about the Premier League and let's talk about the man himself, odds on Edward having his medical at Crystal Palace. Looks as though it's a out to be completed, a move that yes, it does break the heart of the staunchest Hudson Edward fan, it does break the heart of what seems to be an end of an era, you know, I was watching that video the day of Moussa Dembele, Hudson Edward, Olivier and Cham listening to the, the French rap in their car, that is all over, it's gone now it is a real shame, but it, what is he going to say? What part of France is Tupac from? Oh, I, thought, I thought it was French rap though, to be quite honest <laughs> I didn't yeah. listen to what was on in the background. Um, I, I, do, I remember there was a video, so what, I think it was maybe just in Cham listening to French rap, and I put the song on my playlist because I heavily liked it, so I just assumed it was the same artist or something that was on. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Edouard. Odson Edouard undergoing his medical ahead of a £14 million move, which could rise to £18.5 million. Pounds. PSG are due a significant sell-on cause in the deal. It's not as significant as what I think that you will be led to believe. Uh, Celtic are still getting a, a decent sum of money. But look, let's just cut the shite for a minute and let's talk about Odson Edouard. And before we talk about the move and, and having to replace him and whatnot, uh, Odson Edouard has been a magnificent servant for Celtic Football Club over the past four years. A player who we are very lucky uh, to have. I thought it was culture. I didn't listen to the music, right? I didn't listen to the music in the background, right? Um, a player we've been very lucky to have. One of the most talented and entertaining footballers I have seen at Celtic in my lifetime. He's up there in the conversation for the best strikers we've had since Henrik Larsson. Um, you know, some people might say he is the best striker we've had since Henrik Larsson. The guy didn't lose talent overnight, didn't lose it. John Hartson was quick enough to put up a post saying that he, he lost his touch overnight. and he did. They had that argument of him not being able to care. And, and not doing this and not turning up and all the rest of it. At the end of the day, Odson Edward leaves Celtic Football Club after 179 appearances, 86 goals and 39 assists. He's contributed to over, what's that, 96, 100, that's, that's, you know, you're talking nearly 140 goals, I believe, that Odson Edward has contributed to in 179 games for the club. He's done it in big games, he'd done it in European games, he'd done it against Rangers, he'd done it in the cup finals, he arguably won us the treble treble uh, and got Neil Lennon in his job. Odson Edward is truly one of the most special players and I'll stay by that statement till, till the, the day I die that we have seen at Celtic Football Club and I think we should acknowledge that and we should cut all this shit about him being someone who doesn't care, who downed tools. He played in a Celtic team last season that downed tools. Uh, they played for a manager who downed tools, yet he still managed to finish the league campaign as top goal scorer in the Scottish Premiership. Odson Edward leaves Celtic Football Club, Ryan, as uh, someone I wish all the luck in the world and someone who I want to show, I want him to show the world how good a player he truly is. Yeah, I, I wish him all the best. Um, obviously, Last season was a terrible season for all of us, but he still ended up the top goal scorer, and he, he was scoring goals this season as well. Um, I, I like to remember the good times that we had with Edward. I mean, the the goal, ten men, um, that that goal he scored at Ibrox was sensational. That's what basically got me his move to Celtic, and I would say for nine million for the amount of memories that we've got, I don't care about any sort of profit that we get because do you know what we've, we've earned it in terms of memories and the player that we had for what is it is it four years today he signed for Celtic? Mm-hmm. 
on loan from yep. PSG. Um, the amount of memories that we've got in those four years has been incredible. Um, he, he goes with my best wishes. He goes with my with more wishes than than Griffiths, That's for sure. Um, because I don't think he ever I don't think he ever down to the um or wasn't in the right physical shape to play for Celtic. Yes, he um he, he kind of cuts this sort of figure that people could maybe say he doesn't look interested. But that's that's the way just, he always played. He always played. I just want to I just want to throw up a I just want to throw up a comment on screen from Mick here, and, and no disrespect to Mick at all, but says so a bit OTT. Any other striker who actually cared would have buried that chance and won the game on Sunday. I don't think that the miss on Sunday came down to how much he cared. To be quite honest, <laughs> I don't think that had an impact no, on the miss. Uh, the, he missed a sitter. We've missed sitters now. Everybody's missed a sitter in their time. I don't think it comes down to how much you care. It just happens no, that it doesn't was, go in the back of the net. I was going to say that Kyogo would have scored that chance, but then I think of the three or four sitters he's already missed already. Yeah, is that because Kyogo doesn't? Is that because Kyogo doesn't care because he's missed a sitter? No, I'm not having any no, of that. It's absolute garbage comment mm-hmm. that. Um, mm-hmm. But. Look, at the end of the day, we've had, well, I'd still, I see people say Musa was better and all the rest of it. I agree. I, I'm, I'm a Musa, Musa de Belli's my, my king, you know? I see you, you're holding your breath there, aren't you? The way the way he left wasn't great, though, as well. I think history has been very, very kind to, to Musa and there's been a wee bit of revisionism because I, I do remember the way he left. Now, I know there was back and forth with Brendan Rodgers and all that and and Musa had his obviously his comment in that February when when he was like you should have listened to me, you should have listened to me. But it, it wasn't really like the greatest way to leave the club, mm-hmm. regardless of what you say. Um, Edward done it for longer as well. I would say when you look at the goal tallies, Musa was only there for two seasons. Edward was there for four because he was too good to be um, there longer than two seasons, right? And that's why. That's probably true. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree. Well, with well that. no, I don't want to get into barely a dwarf debate. I think we're incredibly lucky that we've seen two of those those, those thing, players at Celtic. And one thing I'm gutted by there was the the link with uh, Musa Dembele maybe going to West Ham on loan. I don't know if there's anything in that, but that that tie was just there last weekend. Crystal Palace v West Ham. I would have loved to have seen Edward v Dembele for either side. That would be absolutely brilliant. Yeah, so anyway, Edward, look, I think ultimately, you know, people can say what they want about him leaving and not caring. It's your opinion. I'm not going to take your opinion away from you. I do believe that saying that, I feel like the whole revisionism because of the last year to say that he's not a great player. And even I say that the last year as if he wasn't top scorer last year, but I feel like this revisionism um, is absolutely a, a shocking. I, like, I think you can have your opinion on the rest of it, but what a player he's been. What, what the stats don't lie. I mean, I'm not someone who wants to sit here and be all analytical and just base everything off stats, but at the end of the day, they do not lie. You don't contribute to nearly 140 goals in 180 games because you you don't care. No, you, you do it because you do care and you do it because you're a talented footballer. But one thing's for true, Ryan, before I start coughing here, one thing's for certain. Um, we got we got a nine million worth out of it. The record signing in Celtic's history. I don't think we can complain about how the nine million was spent and, and what we got in return for that nine million pounds. No, definitely not. We definitely get a value for money. Um, it just shows you when you go out there and put a, a sort of decent transfer sort of fee for a player, you get what you pay for. And you certainly seen that when he came in permanently, because he became a different animal when he came in permanently, in my opinion. Um, those first two seasons especially were incredible. Uh, um, watching Edward um, when oh, some of the right, moments I'll never ever forget. Um, he was the biggest... Oh, he was the biggest foreign in Rangers' side for many, many years. You've seen players having to half him to bring him down. I remember Goldson took him down and halved him. And that, that led to the Julian goal. So it showed you he had that sort of fear factor, even when he wasn't fully fit. Yeah, he's been a great player. Um, and it, it is sad to see him go. But at the same time, I think it is the right the right time to see him go. It's best for all parties that he leaves. Um, and we've got someone new coming in to sort of Philly, Philly's boots, which will be obviously very, very difficult, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, so, you know, we're talking about replacing them with uh, Giacomacus, looks to be the guy that could be coming through the door this evening, hopefully with no problems. Um, but, but yeah, let's talk about Edouard leaving the club in the sense that uh, this was probably the best move for the club, wasn't it, Ryan? The fact that we are now seeing him leave the club with uh, a fee being paid, we've actually brought in money. I was always of the, the kind of opinion that, yeah, Look, he could have stayed this season and helped us go and win a league title, which gets us a £40 million Champions League entry. But, you know, this is a fee that could rise up to £18.5 million. Now, just let's disregard the PSG sell-on clause for a moment. Of course, that will be involved. But 
you know, if you 18 and a half million pounds plus 40 million pounds, you're talking there 58 and a half million pounds, Ryan. Now, I'd rather the 58 and a half million pounds than just the 40 million pounds because we can replace them. We, we, we definitely can. If the board want to do it, they want to do it right, which is still obviously a big question mark. But um, we've got Kyogo in, we've got good attacking players. We can replace it, Ward. It's for as big a player he is, and I think it'll be hard to find a, a player of his technical ability. We can still replace goals. We've done it before. We've done it when Larson left the club. We've done it when Hooper left the club. We've done it when Dembele left the club. We've done it when our best strikers have left the club. We, we can get goals, despite them not being a, even a, a kind of patch on the player before them. We can still get goals. Life goes on when you're a Celtic supporter. You see players go in and out all the time. Um, I can't believe we've got four years out of Edward, to be honest with you. I thought we would yeah. only have half that amount. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. which, which, which has its positives and negatives, because obviously we could have sold them for more. But at the end of the day, when Celtic fans go to bed at night, we don't see the profits of players. We think of memories that the players had, and he certainly lived up to that. Um, so even though, even though we sold him for a lesser amount than we probably would have been expecting two years ago, he leaves with our best wishes. And and look, I think we've already signed his replacement in Kyogo, different player, yes, but I still think Kyogo scored goals if you put him through the middle. Yeah. You've seen the, the impact he had when he went, went through the middle after Edward um, was sort of shifted. And I, I think we're a better player when Kyogo's up front. Say, say, say what you want about Edward, but I think Kyogo's our, our striker and Yakimaki's coming in will be a good sort of a, we get a good sort of backup that you can bring off the bench or that, that can play in a more um, physical game. But I think we've got his replacement in Kyogo already. Yeah, probably do. Um, so Crystal Palace then, it, it's a move that probably we didn't expect this time a year ago. You know, he was probably on his way to bigger and better things, still a Premier League move, probably a good attraction there of playing under a French legend and, and Patrick Vieira. Um, it's a squad that's very much gone through a turnaround and and, and how they, they approach yep. the game and approach football. You know, if it was, it would never have happened under Roy Hodgson, this signing, but of course they are going through a little bit of a change now. So, you know, there's a chance for him to show his talent in the Premier League and I really do think he can. I think he's that good a player. Um, now, Crystal Palace, a team that I'll be honest about, I say a tip for relegation this season. But, you know, if, if Edward can get in there and score goals, Palace have already showed so far in the opening few games that they can score goals and they will try and score goals. They performed well against West Ham at the weekend. Um, it could be a decent move for him. And it's one of those ones, if he can heighten the profile, I don't know if Celtic have got any sell-ons involved in the transfer, but, you know, hopefully we do see him get another big move post, post Crystal Palace, right? Yeah, and I think the more you think about this move for Edward, the better it gets. Because if you look at the players they've got on their books as well, it's a, they've got some really good attacking talent that can feed off of Edward as well. Wait till a bit. Wait till um, is back in. Wait till he's back from exactly. injury. Exactly. He's the he's the jewel in in that whole team. Um, he he's the diamond basically. Um, they've got Zaha as well. Now I know he's getting a wee bit older, but he's still quite an explosive player. He will be for the next couple of years. They've got Eze. They've got I'm trying to think of the other players I've got. They've got Benteke as well. Um, the Jordan Ayew as well. So they've got players all over that can help Edward fit in. And it's, it's good that he's playing under a French legend in Vieira. That will help him settle in. I, I've got no doubt he'll be a success at Crystal Palace. I think he will score goals for them. Um, a lot of the Crystal Palace fans are really happy that he's coming in. And it, it, if, he, if, he, if he shows up down, down south, then there's no doubt that he'll get a bigger move then because he's only 23. He's, he's still relatively speaking a, a youngster um in terms of his career so he can go he can go and, and do the business and then get a bigger move i think so i good luck to him and i think it's a good fit for him yep okay we'll come off of the odds to the world chat just now thank you very much eddie you've been an absolute gem it's been a pleasure speaking about you every week and i hope you do well at crystal palace my man now uh we're still sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting for something to happen there has been nothing much yet. Joram Boateng has just agreed a deal with Olympique Lyon. So it looks as though that the World Cup winner, the Bundesliga winner, the Champions League winner will join up with Moussa Dembele over the next 24 hours. Um, we've got Blake donating £2. He said, still need two strikers, a left wing Christie replacement. Still using that term of Christie being the left winger, but we'll, we'll come on to it anyway. And uh, uh, Defo, a left back. We'll come on to it, Blake. Thanks very much for the £2. We will be talking about that. Very, very shortly, because let's talk about Celtic and what they have racked up over the past year. 
the departures for the past 12 months at Celtic Football Club. I'm going to do a little bit of reading. There's going to be a lot of numbers here, Ryan. But just stay tuned, listen in, and we'll talk about this after. We'll talk about the impact after we've spoke here. So Celtic are looking to sell Edward for what is being reported a fee up to £18.5 million. Pounds. Christopher Iyer left for £13.5 million, pounds, which is a deal that could also rise, I believe, but we'll say £13.5 million. Pounds. Bayo for £1.5 million. Pounds. Hendry for £1.35 million. Pounds. Marion Schved for a million pounds. Jeremy Frimpong for £11.5 million. Pounds. Patrick Clamara for £4 million. Pounds. Kuasi Abu for £1.35 million. Pounds. And uh, Mr. Ab Abdel, El I forgot his name now, it's just skip my head, El Ahmed, El Ahmed, for £0.8 million, which is a total of £54.5 million pounds in transfer fees. Now, I don't know what Joe Black says about that, but £54.5 million pounds Celtic have racked up in transfer fees. Yes, we've signed Kyogo, we've signed Lee Abada, we've signed Joe Hart, we've signed James McCarthy, we've brought in a good few players this season already but 54 and a half million pounds that's a lot of money Ryan and the deadline day thus far we have not spent a penny the money is there for Celtic to reinvest in this team and we need it to be done because we've lost Ke Edward Ayer Frimpong you know they were three guys that were in the first team uh, El Ahmed was, was of great use Kamara was still of use had a big future I thought but We've moved on. These are names that we've, we we still need to look at replacing. We're still in a very thin squad, Ryan, and there's fifty four and a half million pounds there at the end of the day. Yeah, and that's players that we've um, that we've sold. You think about in Cham as well. We wrapped up his contract, and that would be another midfield option that we don't have anymore, which isn't ideal. Um, Celtic, the, the the amount of time that I've watched them or the time that I've supported them, they've always been a sort of selling club, um, sort of balance, balancing the books. And I think they're the only team that have that have managed in a rebuild to get a profit. Like that just mm -hmm. should never be the case. You should be you should be spending your reserves basically um, if you're doing a rebuild to get back to where you belong um, or back to where we think we belong. Um, it's it's not ideal. The fact the money the money is there to spend, but I just don't see us spending it. I'm, I'm surprised that we've only got one loan deal coming through the door. I thought we'd have a lot more than that. Um, maybe two if Carter Vicker comes in. I don't even think that's going to happen. I think Newcastle are interested, but we're definitely a selling club. That nothing's changed there. I don't know what the the sort of impact of the pandemic had on finances. I thought maybe Frimpong was maybe we sold Frimpong due to having having those sort of difficulties financially and to sort of balance the books. But it's it's, it's stuff that I'm not I'm not very um, not very adept at talking about transfer fees and all that. So I don't really know the whole story, but. Yeah, at the end of the day, we are no qualified. Account we are no qualified accountants, you know. We're just going off what we'd like to see, I suppose. But we're risking, we're risking it because this season we get forty million at stake. Basically, we should be speculating to accumulate and bringing in the best players to get this job done. I've no doubt if we brought in better players, we could have, we could have beat Rangers at the weekend. We could have beaten Rangers at the weekend anyway because I don't think they're that great. Um, it just. It, it just so happened that we didn't. You've just, set off, you've, just, you've just set off half the comment section by saying that, Ryan. Well done, son. <laughs> I didn't think they were that great because they weren't. It was an awful game. Um, we played well the first half, second half, we didn't turn up. They get the goal because we couldn't defend a corner. Um, if our players had turned up, we would have won the game, in my opinion. Um, but that's 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 for a different day, I guess. Um, speculate to accumulate, got to bring in better players, got to bring in more players. There's some positions that I don't think we've strengthened in. Um, there's still some gaping holes in my opinion in terms of left back, left wing but you know, that's just Celtic at the end of the day, we're used to this Yep, we are, it's certainly nothing new so let's talk about it then, who is coming into Celtic, we await anything, really it, it's been quiet all day, not just in terms of Celtic's official announcements but you know, we've not heard much in a few hours now there's not been much of a, you know, oh that's a medical done or blah 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 we are still waiting, and Ryan, as you've already touched on, it is looking increasingly likely that Celtic will go down the route of announcing both of these signings very, very late tonight, as if it has been a busy and hectic day for the club, when in reality, we've been linked with both the players we're going to speak about uh, an awful lot over the past week, 
never mind the past few days. Uh, Giacomakis, that started, I mean, I made my video probably close to two weeks ago now and, and Giacomakis being linked with the club. Um, Jota, we'll come on to talking about him as well. You know, we've heard that for a few days. I think that was first broke on Friday night or Thursday night maybe, I, I can't remember. Um, you know, these are names that have been linked around the club for a little while now, so they're not going to be anything new, not going to be a surprise. Um we're now kind of hoping that Celtic do present us with a surprise in the terms of more signings because two isn't enough, I don't think. I don't think two players is, is enough for Celtic right now. I would throw up a graphic and screen that outlines the exact depth of our squad and how many players we've got there. But at, at the end of the day, two players isn't enough. That's that's the reality for me. There was people last night that were, and I know Matthew's watching, I'm not going to throw Matthew under the bus, but he put, he put up a photo of the Celtic squad and says, that squad wins the league, and I honestly don't look at that squad as a, a club as a, as a, enough. And a couple of injuries away from another disaster, another nightmare. Yeah. Already a few of those players in the team. And just in case Matthew is watching, I'm not attacking you here, Matthew. I just mean the squad in general. You know, you look at McCarthy, who we don't know if he's going to be fit enough over the course of the season. Um, you look at some other players who have been in and out of injury issues, and you look at Sorrow, who's still very much a player that's to be judged. You know, you're a couple of injuries really away from being in the same position as we were when we started the window because we have lost all these guys like Edward Dyer and, and um, Ryan Christie. So it really is worrying that two players might be looked at as enough. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm looking at this wee graphic myself. It shows you all the players mm -hmm. that we've got in terms of if this is if we get Jota and Jackie Marcus in the door um, and, it, and it highlights the yellow players. The yellow players are players that haven't had a single competitive minute under Ange Postacoglu. So it's players that he obviously doesn't fancy or doesn't fancy that much. It's really worrying because that's supposed to be our depth and they've not had game time whatsoever, either in pre-season. Well, well, they have obviously had game time in pre-season, but they've not had any minutes professionally in competitive games, which is really worrying. Um, it shows that a lot of the players that are there aren't fancied. So I don't know if they're going to go out on loan. I don't know if we can afford to even send those guys out on loan because we'd, uh, our, our squad would be so thin then. So we're in a position where there's players that the manager obviously doesn't fancy that are there just for this, the sake of squad depth to fill a subs bench, basically, which isn't ideal at all. Um, no, it's, it's it's not ideal at all. I mean, I was saying, I, I get stick for it last night for saying I wanted a minimum of four in today. Looks like we're only getting in two. Yep. It's just not really, it's well, not listen, really acceptable. Last, I, want, I wanted four. Last week, Hans Postacoglu said on his press conference, his interview after the game, we need more bodies in. And this was before we sold two of our kind of start the living as players. That was before that. So if it was two then, say he wanted more bodies and it was two then, surely that doubles. Surely that becomes four now. I don't think you were wrong by saying that the minimum was four. I think you're looking at Celtic needing four or five players tonight. But it's just not going to happen. And Ange Postacoglu knows that's what we need. He said that. He's been very, very open about that. But once again, we've let bad dealings and and, and a kind of I don't want to I don't know who to shift the blame towards in particular such here, but we've left we've left ourselves in a situation where poor negotiation and such has got us to this point again. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean you you see in the videos always they always ask when did you hear well the new signings, they say when did you first hear a Celtic's interest? They say oh two, three weeks ago. Oh, that, that's too long. It, it needs yep. to be a lot quicker than this. If we're going to be taken seriously, we need to get deals done quickly. Can't stop penny pinching for whatever players want or or not giving what players want. If we need somebody in that, in that position, then we need to go out and sign them. It's it's really infuriating, but we, I've been saying this all summer. Um, I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over and over again, which I have been. Um, it's really, really annoying. and I, I feel like I'm rambling, but that's just the way I feel at the moment. I'd, I'd love us to go maybe even go and lodge a couple of a couple of bids for players if if, if Doy, Doy is still available. We need a, we need a left back as well. Like that's mm -hmm. just been papered over basically. I don't know where Scales plays. Does he plays a left back, a left wing back, or a left side and centre half? I, I guess we'll find out in in due course. But we we do need a left back. Greg Taylor is not good enough to be the left back. Just um, to clarify, there's been no there's no negativity towards Ange. None at all. You know, this isn't Ange's no. fault. You know, this this is why we spoke about directors of football. This is why we spoke about you know, this is board's fault. This is nothing to do with Ange. I'm giving Ange all the time nothing. he needs in the world. Uh, but he needs the players to work with in that time. And waiting from now till January uh, on the on the kind of 
the hope that no one will be injured or suspended when you're playing two games a week is is a very big gamble. That's the reality. Yeah, especially with the sort of hectic schedule that we've got. Um, mm-hmm. We get the Europa League, we get the League Cup, we get domestic fixtures in the, in, in the weekdays that we won't be playing um, in Europe. So it's going to be hectic and there needs to be adequate rotation in the team. And I don't think we've got that rotation. I feel like if we, if we bring in youngsters that aren't fancied by the manager and that maybe can't fit this system that we play in, then that's a problem mm-hmm. because we need to have like we need to have replacements that can come into the team if an injury crisis does happen. And I don't think we have that. It's really, really disappointing for me um, that these sort of issues haven't been addressed properly. And it's the timing as well. Like, I know we brought in Juranovic, but we were playing with Ralston for three, four weeks. He was only right back at the club. It's mistakes that have happened time and time again. And I thought that this just wouldn't happen under Dominic Mackay. Maybe I was a wee bit naive to think that, but, you know, it's the same old, same old. Yes, we have brought some good signings in. That that cannot be downplayed. But um, at the same time, it's disappointing the timing of players coming in. Yeah, look, we've we've been going for fifty one minutes. Let's touch on the two guys coming in quickly to kind of end off our show today. There will be plenty of coverage on both my Twitter, your Twitter. We'll be talking about the announcements if they do come, and maybe a surprise announcement if it comes. Also, a big shout-out to Hamish and the guys at 67 Hill Hill. They're going to be live, I think, tonight at 9 o'clock as well. So if you've got some coverage there tonight over on his channel. But we've still got a wee bit to go here. Let's talk about both players coming into the club and what they offer and what our opinions are of them. Let's start with João Felipe Jota, uh, the Portuguese talent who could be making his way into Celtic today. We're awaiting that sort of news to drop. Um Top goal scorer at the Under-19s Championship in 2018. Liga Pro Young Player of the Year in 2018-19. Progress blocked by Everton Suarez at Benfica, who we all know is a talented, talented player. He was loaned out to a very poor valid lead side in 2020-21. But uh, an excellent youngster with a lot of pedigree and promise there, looking to maybe sort of... uh, get it fully nourished, you could say, at Celtic this season. A player with the more I watch of him and, and the little that I, I do know about him, but w- what I see of him is he's, he's a guy and he's a name who I believe could be very much the sort of player that Ange would love to work with, Ryan. Yeah, he definitely gives us a lot of width on the on the left-hand side. He looks like he, he loves a tricker too, for certain. He, his end product can be a wee bit hit or miss, maybe that's because I've watched an eight-minute video rather than the two-minute videos that usually go about with these players. So you do see the positives and negatives. But this is a guy that was in the same the same sort of youth academy as Jao Felix. And the, the two of them were talked about quite quite consistently at the same time. Whenever anybody mentioned Felix, they mentioned Jota as well. So he's definitely a, a guy that, that has potential. Um, it's great that we've got an option to buy. I, I, I hate loans where we don't have an option to buy. But what mm-hmm. good does that serve us? Um, because it, it should be your choice to sort of buy a player at the end of his loan. That always helps us. So I, I think the fee's somewhere in the region of six million if we were to sign him. So so this is a this, this is a bit of an olive branch to to Jota. He can come in, earn his move by playing football every week. I feel like with Celtic he will get game time on the left hand side he's not really got much competition we get Johnson who's out every two games it feels like and we get Christie that's on his way out of the club as well so he, he, he's he got that position to sort of make his own and make an impression so he's a guy that I'm really really excited to watch um, can't remember the last Portuguese player we had I mean you could, you could honestly oh, I, was say, trying to think, I was trying to think of this the other night I, I genuinely can't remember who the last uh, Portuguese player we would have had at the club was um, you could probably say Amido Baldi, but he's he's declared for Guinea. Um, does, it as, does it go as far back as does it goes far back as Cadet? A Cadetti? Does it go as far back as him? I don't know. Surely there's been one. Is that in goalkeeper between. was Broto? Was Broto? Portuguese? Oh, can, I, can I tell you? I don't even know. He that's, that's before to be my time. That's, that's before my time. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people in the chat are saying, saying, yeah, a lot of people are saying it's Cadet, you know, a, a lot of people in the chat saying him. It must be. And I was I was thinking that the other day. I was lying in my bed and I was like Surely the last one to play for, for Celtic isn't Cadet. You know, you'd think there'd be somebody in between. That's that's over 20 years, but, you know, there you go. That's That shows you how long it's been since we've had a Portuguese player at the club. 
yeah, people are saying that Broto was Spanish. But I Broto was Spanish. Yeah, I, there I, you I, go. Just, I just didn't know if his uh, if his surname it did sound a wee bit Portuguese. You can't, you can't it's around be... the it's around the Mediterranean region anyway. You could say very that. very close to each other. Very very close to yes, each other. Yes, yes, cross bordering. But do you know that'll bring in a, a new section of fans as well. Probably watching them. I, I've seen a lot of Benfica fans are going to tune in purely because because Jota is coming to Celtic. That's that's good. Can't, you can't beat that. Can, loads loads of fans around the world. Um, fingers crossed. That's, he does the business for Celtic. Big question mark surrounding it. Of course, you are a big man, a big man, a big fan of. Uh, you're certainly not a big man, right? Big man. <laughs> uh, maybe, 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 maybe one way, not the other way. Oh Christ Almighty! I, I might be. Oh, no, 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 Jesus. I meant wait. I meant no, I meant wait. Oh, aye, aye. Right, okay, Christ, aye. this has got X rated. This, I know, um, yeah, that's get that. <laughs> um, but well, listen, no, I know you were a big fan of Rog- eh, Rogic, eh, Lovric, uh, and you were champion, championing a move for him to, to come to Celtic. It would have cost probably a little bit of money for the club. Now, I'm not denying that Jota is probably a great player, and I do look forward to seeing him at Celtic. I think he will be a good player, and I, I, look, I look forward to it. But is there an aspect to this move that annoys you that it is another loan deal that will have waited this long and landed yourself in the position where it is a part time fix? Would you have rather Celtic went out there and identified this long, long ago and got a player who was going to be ill? player rather than a loaner a loan signing a loaner he probably won't be a loaner the only Portuguese guy in Glasgow um, do you know I'm annoyed that it isn't Lovric especially with the fact that Edward and Christie are away but it, it, it doesn't hurt as much because I know we've got an option to buy at the end of this deal so mm-hmm. it still kind of feels like our player a wee bit if we want him um, the fact is, people. Uh, someone was messaging me saying that, oh, because it's an option to buy, somebody else could come in and and buy him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, that's not the case because an option to buy means we get the first option. Yeah, that's that's why we lost Jack Hendry. We could have probably sold Jack Hendry if we got him back at the club. But the fact, the fact is, the the Belgian club bought him with the the agreement that we got. Um, I would have liked Lovren to look like, like he'd be a perfect fit for Celtic with the amounts of goals and assists that he got, but at the same time, I really don't see it happening now. So, I mean, it's pretty good that that saga is over as well. Um, I, don't, I don't know how concrete or an interest in him was, apart from the fact he was liking stuff on Instagram, but I'm just glad that that, that saga is over and we can sort of focus on the new boy coming in, which looks mm-hmm. like it will only be a matter of time before he does come in. So, overall, I'm happy that we're getting a left winger. It was a position that needed to get filled, and I'm glad that it's getting filled. Yeah, OK, we'll stop for talking about Jota so we can get on to the last player. Some big news in the Scottish Premiership. Jason Kerr looks to be joining Wigan, Wigan in League One for £500,000. Um, I mean, that's a bit of a rob, I think. For I think St Johnson should have, should have and could have got more for Mr Jason Kerr. And to be honest, I probably would have taken him at Celtic at this rate as a backup option, but he's he's off to Wigan. Uh, big move in the Scottish Premiership. One of St. George's best players. He looks to be heading off to League One uh, to play down there. Talk about Wigan, you see there was some sort of Belfast-based newspaper trying to stir up that Will Grigg was... was uh, uh, That was that was nonsense, that. You know, imagine, imagine, no, imagine we actually got Will Grigg. I think I would generally give up at that point. <laughs> that would be... Oh, you went off there. Oh, have I, have I? Am I, am I back? Am I back yet? Am I back? Mm. <laughs> just, just, to, I don't know who's away here, if it's me or him. I don't know who you can hear. Ryan's froze for me, so I'm going to just keep talking away and pretend that I'm I'm the one who's still here with 1,100 viewers in the chat. I'll, I'll, wait, I'll wait and see if McGinley unfreezes. But it would be nice if somebody said in the chat just now, who is the one they can hear? Is it me? Is it McGinley? I don't know. We can only assume. I'm just going to keep going until McGinley kind of unfreezes down in the bottom of my screen. I'll take him off. I'm still here. I'm still here. So we'll allow McGinley's camera to unfreeze. I'll wait to see him move down the bottom of the screen. Uh, yeah, so Celtic, of course, still waiting on something, still waiting on announcements. And uh, yes, unfortunately, it is. The, as we come to the sort of last bit of the show, I felt like proper Jim White tonight. I like this. I enjoy this. I feel like it's a proper Jim White type role, even though he's not even doing uh, the the transfer shows anymore, and he's not doing anything for Sky Sports. I still feel like it is a Jim White type affair for me this evening. As Ryan does join me back again, there he is. We'll go on to. We'll go- you were talking was- about Will Greg. Ah, Will Greg. Ah, well, well, let's not. The less said about Will Greg, the better. Um, we'll go on to talk about the like, the last kind of guy that we're waiting to see Celtic announce tonight. If if it happens to only be two, then this will be the second of two, uh, and that is Mister Georgius Giacomakis. Um, yeah, it looks like that 
he could be coming in to be the sort of Edward replacement. Um, obviously, once again, a player that we've not seen an awful lot of, but we know last season was top scorer in the Dutch Eredivisie, Divisi um, and could be, you know, the, the answer to the Edward issue. We have got Kyogo, but we have got someone else now as two straight, well, two strikers to part the cup today, Griffiths and Edward. So we have, we yeah. are looking to bring someone in. And uh, are you happy about can you, that? Can you press your breaking news? Button, please. Oh, is there some breaking news? I wish I had like, a sound effect for this. Do, 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 do. Can't even fucking find it. <laughs> hey, breaking news. Go on, Ryan. Break the news for us, son. Leo Connor has joined Tranmere Rovers. Oh, for fuck's long sake. Long. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fucking breaking news. Thanks very you much. Use it. You can't use it. I just oh, want to use your graphic. Ah, there we go. Breaking news coming out of Celtic. Leo Connor. There, there's another player with the depth away. There's, there's less step in the Celtic squad. I, I didn't expect Leo Connor to feature for Celtic much this season, but there you go. There's your breaking news live via Broco on the Ryan 118 channel. Mr. Ryan McGinley, you must feel like Fabricio Romano right now, breaking that live on the air. I do. I, I felt power there, which was absolutely brilliant. Um, power? I, we, we need not Alan power, obviously. Um, <laughs> it'd probably be a lot slower. Um, I'm just glad you could use your breaking news graphic. Yeah, so Leo Connor leaving, a player whose future hasn't really been certain at Celtic Football Club, Ryan, it, it, there was talk about him heading back out on loan, it, I, I believe Tranmere was where he was last season uh, as was. well, so yeah, it's not much of a big miss for Celtic, but it is another player gone. He joins Mickey Mellon and Ross Doon at Tranmere Rovers, um, two familiar Scottish faces, or two people that have been around in Scotland, in fact they're both Scottish, um, so he's obviously joined there a good Scottish contingent there so it'll be interesting to see how he does it's obviously familiar surroundings to where he's been before he was obviously there last season but um, I don't think he was ever going to get a shot in the team I mean it spoke a lot at the start of the season I know Ralston had such a good sort of breaking into the first time he done so well breaking into the first team um, but it showed you that it, the fact that he wasn't getting even quoted in the first team when Ralston was in there showed that the writing was on the wall I think for Leo Connor especially for this season yeah, I, I do kind of hope there is a future for Leo Connor. He was a guy that joined from Manchester United and he was, I think, the captain of the under-18s team at the time. I, I was quite excited to see him come to Celtic and especially when Jeremy Frimpong got um, into the position he found himself in, I thought, well, maybe Leo Connor's not far behind. They signed at the same time, basically identical days and identical time frames that they joined the club. But there you go, Leo Connor is, is gone from Celtic. Um, so... Yeah, I, I don't know if David's thrown up here. So that's us five down from Sunday night squad. So we need at least 11 in today because we had at least six shot then. Christ, very, very quick math from David there. But uh, yeah. yeah, Leo, Leo Connor does leave. It's a chance to use that breaking news button. Tomorrow I'll be on the channel recapping the entire transfer window and who's came in and who's left. And we have everything done and official. But there you go. There's the latest departure at Celtic Football Club. Leo O'Connor does leave. So we could go back to talking about Georgius Giacomakis. We were touching on him just before that news broke. Ryan, uh, a good enough replacement for Edward? It's good enough replacement for Griffiths. I'm not too sure about Edward. Um, I've got to be honest, I don't know much about the guy. Obviously scored 26 goals in the Eredivisie last season. I think that's the way you pronounce it, unless I've been saying it wrong the whole time. Um, 26 goals for a, a relegated team. I'm hoping that's the reason why we've got him for so cheap and the reason why there was not as as many clubs in for him. Um, I don't know if there was a clause in his contract that meant if he was to get relegated, then we could get him for cheaper because it was only us and Werder Bremen that were in for him and they were relegated from the Bundesliga. So I'm hoping that we've seen something that these other teams haven't that will, that will convince or not convince that will um, make him a success at Celtic. He gives a good aerial presence. A lot of his goals have been headers. They're headers and penalties, a lot of them. Um, so it'll bring a new dimension to the team. And I'm looking forward to seeing him play for Celtic. Um, I heard mm -hmm. that Ange was... Ange personally convinced him to come to Celtic, which is a good sign. Um, there's obviously that Greek link, because Ange has got Greek heritage, and Giacomakis is obviously Greek. Mm -hmm. So fingers crossed it works out for him. 
Yeah, I hope it does look, work out from what we all know about his statistics last season in the Eredivisie and how he finished top scorer. It's now about translating that to the Scottish game, a different type of player once more, Ryan. And that's that's been the, the sort of big conversation, the difference in losing at world. We're bringing in Brank Yogo, we're bringing in Giacomakis. They are two completely different players from Celtic, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Things change with a new manager, styles change, and they look for their own style of player. And, and it could be interesting having someone in there that does offer a little bit of a, a different dynamic for Celtic. Yeah, definitely, and it, it it just shows again. I mean, I know, I know he, I know that his team get relegated, but he was the top goal scorer in his league. So we're not signing projects or as many projects as we were before. We're signing guys that can come into the first team straight away. What age is he as well? Is he twenty six? Twenty six, I believe. Yep, twenty six. Entering the prime of his career, he could just simply be a late bloomer. You, you see that happening with a lot of strikers. A lot of strikers mould their game and mould their game. It's the same with. It's the same with Thomas Henry, who we were linked with a few weeks ago. He looked to be a bit of a late bloomer too. And I know he had his injury problems, but it was the same with Michu too. He was about 26, 27 when he had that amazing mm-hmm. season for Swansea. So if he can score half the goals Michu did that season when we're on to a winner. Um, I, it's, it's, he's very much an unknown quantity and we'll see if he can sort of replicate his success of last season. But I'm quite confident he can do a job in this league. 26 goals. I mean, if he was to score 13 off the bench, I'd be quite happy because Kyogo, I want Kyogo to be the, the sort of main striker on this team. So, around about 13 to 15 goal mark, I'd be quite happy. Yeah, I'd be quite happy with that as well, especially when you do expect the likes of Kyogo to be ahead of him in the in the lineup, I'd imagine. So, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see what happens. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's pretty much it for Celtics as, as far as it goes in this window, it seems. We are only hearing about these two guys. There were talks about Cameron and Carter Vickers of, of Tottenham Hotspur, but it, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Tottenham aren't too favourable of a, a loan deal. Um, I think that Newcastle are now interested, as you've mentioned, Ryan. It does look as though that's got to be something that, that doesn't happen. So we are very much yeah. really looking at a deadline day uh, of two players and two players. It's not enough, but I don't know. We're going to probably have to, to get along with it and just see what happens till January. Now, Ryan, yeah. just before we do go off the air, and we'll end up going off the air and something massive will break. You know, there'll be an announcement of a player that we've, we've not heard anything of. Um, but what are your overall thoughts and feelings towards, I suppose, the whole transfer window, but particularly deadline day, I, I still can't help but feel uh, a bit, I'm, I'm a bit grudged at the board for, for, for not putting us in a better position. Um, I was hoping for more today, in, in, in all honesty. Yeah, especially the the caliber and quality of players that were coming out, or, or the, the leaving the, the, the team rather. I wanted this to strengthen. I wanted to get three or four in to sort of have that, to sort of capture the good feeling back that was there before the Rangers game. Because I don't know about you, but I I felt absolutely gutted thinking about Celtic the past couple of days. Just the disappointment of Sunday hasn't left me at all, and it'll take a while for it to go away. I think it'll remain there throughout the international break and in the Saturday game against. Ross County. I just, I just hope we can sort of get the feel good factor back quickly. Um, and in terms of the the business that we've done, we have signed a lot of good players. We've signed, um, obviously, Abada, Kyogo, two players that have walked into the first team. And yes, a couple of them had a disappointing Celtic Rangers game, but at the same time, they've been doing well in every other game this season. So I can, I can sort of let them off the hook. Um, and and they will get better and better the longer they play in the team. So, I mean, it has been a good transfer window. It's just, it's, it's the problem, the problem is the timing of the players that are coming in. Um, it's not been, it's not been as, as quick as what as I would have wanted it to be. I remember that in the middle sort of period until we got Joe Hart and James McCarthy. I was like, where are these signings coming? When when are they coming? Mm-hmm. We're just sitting on, it was as if we were just sitting on, our, sitting on our hands for two, three weeks, but they sort of saved themselves with those two signings, although those signings could have been done in June, July time, you would imagine. So, I, I feel like I'm just rambling on a bit. So, I mean, it has been good, but it could have been done a lot quicker, a lot of the deals. Yeah, and that'll about do us. We've been live for an hour and 10 minutes. We've basically done our own shift on Sky Sports News uh, this afternoon. Ryan, an absolute shift from yourself, son. Thank you very much. I've been sitting here just hoping and praying and something would have happened. But the only breaking news we seem to have got was that Leo Connors left on a loan deal. So, that's a shame. But, it, you know, it is what it is. But, Hopefully by tonight we do pull a couple of surprises out the bag. I just really don't see that happening. I wouldn't get your hopes up, Celtic fans. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be too hopeful of that. Um, yeah. Do you know? What would, I, do you know what would be really nice? Sorry. 
Go on. Remember, remember when Ronnie Dyer was, was it his first season? Remember we get the Mackay, Stephen, and Armstrong. No, I. Oh. See if that was like, see if that was like Doy, Gurnisbet, or uh, McCann. That'd be absolutely brilliant. And even Ferguson, mm-hmm. just sort of strengthen. Even even because the Scottish market, there's still a few good players in there, but. I don't see it happening. I can see myself being disappointed with two new players, which sounds terrible, but that's just the state we're in. Yeah, that is. Right, that'll do us. Uh, as I said, make sure to keep up with us. Our Twitters are uh, rolling across the bottom of the screen. They have been all day. If you do want to keep up with any of our reactions or any news, then make sure to follow myself at Ryan Stephen F or follow Ryan at the Ryan McGinley. On Twitter, I once again a big shout out to Hamish and such at 67 Hill Hill. They'll be live tonight at nine o'clock if you want to go and follow their coverage of the later part in this transfer window. They'll probably have a bit more news to talk about, maybe. Um, but lads, thank you. We've had over a thousand viewers through the entirety of the stream, pretty much. So thank you very much for tuning in. It is a massive honor, as always. Um, yeah, so I think that's us. I think we could call it a day there. I'm I'm guaranteeing as soon as I press this button, as soon as I press end stream, something massive is going to happen. I hope not. But thank you anyway. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. We're almost at 30,000 subs. Uh, Ryan, thank you. And we'll see you all next time.